Another amplifier circuit uh, that exists in uh, slide number 22 in the PowerPoint posted in the uh, blackboard. Uh, we have this circuit with the input signal here. This is the signal to be amplified, and the output is taken from this terminal. As we see, the input is going towards the gate, the output is taken from the source. So basically, this is a common drain. This is a common drain amplifier, right? It says here that we need to calculate our input looking from here at this point, our output looking from here, and the gain between V output and V signal. And it says that lambda is not equal to zero, which means that you should take RO into account, right? So, so here we shouldn't ignore RO, we should take RO into account. So we'll start by plotting, or directly we'll go to the AC analysis, so we plot the uh, a small signal model or the small signal circuit and we'll do the uh, AC analysis directly assuming that the DC analysis uh, has been done already. Okay, so we'll go step by step as usual. We'll start from the input source. We have V signal here and then we go to R signal. And then the capacitor here for the AC to be short circuit. Then we have a resistance RG towards the ground. Then the gate of the transistor comes. Here we can use either the pi model or the T model. I will use the T model here, but I advise you always, if I use one model, you try to solve the same problem with the other model just to train yourself on solving these amplifier cells. So I'm going to use here the T model. So the T model says that the gate is connected in this way and then we have here a dependent source GMVGS where this is the gate G and we have here a resistor 1 over GM and then this is the source between the drain and the source also there is a resistance uh, ohm Okay, and then the source here, the source of the transistor, first is connected to a DC current supply. This current source is used for biasing, right? So we are going to deactivate the source because this is a DC and we are, go we are doing AC analysis. So in the AC analysis, we deactivate the DC sources. Deactivating the current source means making it open circuit. So this current source will be basically open circuit, so this branch is going to disappear. After this, this capacitor will be short circuit, this capacitor will be short circuit, and then we have RL towards the ground, this is our load, and the output is taken from this point. Then the drain, the drain will be, or the drain is connected to a DC voltage source. When we do the AC analysis, the DC voltage source will be deactivated by making it short circuit towards the ground. So you can imagine that this DC voltage source is like a battery, like this. When you deactivate it, you will make it zero. Zero voltage source means short circuit towards the ground, right? So the drain will be short circuited towards the ground. So this is now our AC circuit. Now we can simplify the circuit by noticing that RO is connected between the source and the ground, right? RO, the resistance RO is connected between the source and the ground. So we can simplify the circuit by plotting RO in a different way. We can just remove it from here and we plot it between the source and the ground, but we plot it down between the source and the ground. So this is the resistance RO. <coughs> now, the circuit is a bit simpler than the previous shape because if we have our all connected up like this, the analysis of the circuit will be difficult because we have like uh, this delta shape and this delta shape is kind of difficult to analyze uh, in circuit. So it's better to just draw it in a different way, our all between the source and the ground, we plot it between the source and the ground. So still it is between the source and the ground, but we plot it in a simpler way uh, to do the analysis. Now notice that this current source is GMVGS and the current here also, the current we go, that we go in this resistance is also, the current here is also GM 
VGS. So this current is the same as this current. And the current of the gate is zero, right? So one way you can do the analysis using the current GMVGS. You can do that using GMVGS. Or you can simply call the current, you can call it I. And you can call the current here I. So the current here is I and the current here is I. This might make it uh, easier instead of dealing with GMVGS, we deal with I. So now, let's start with the first request. We need to calculate our input looking just before RG. So we need to calculate our input looking from here. So our input looking from here, the first step is remove everything before. So you forget everything before. And then when you forget everything before, so this is now the calculation of our input, you forget everything before, you will find that you have a circuit that looks like this, IG equals zero, so the current here is zero, and then the rest of the circuit, the rest of the circuit. Now, if you are confused, if you can't see what is the input resistance, what is the Thibling equivalent resistance from here, you can just connect a voltage source called Vx that generates current Ix. And then you say that our input is Vx divided by Ix. If you do that, you'll find that because Ig equals zero, the current Ix is the same as the current that will go here, right? So that all the current Ix going out from our, uh, our imaginary source, here it will go to the resistance Rg. So you can say from applying KVL in this loop, you can say that Vx equals Ix multiplied by Rg, and then Vx over Ix equals Rg, and this is exactly our R input. So our input, R input here, R input here is R. G. This is if you can see it directly, but if you notice from the beginning that since the current of the gate here is zero, since the current of the gate is zero, this means that the resistance that you will see here is infinity. The input resistance is called R input bar is infinity. Why? Because the current is zero. If the current is zero in one terminal, for sure whatever the voltage across this terminal, the current is zero, this means that the resistance is infinity. And the input resistance that you will see from here is Rg. The input resistance that you will see from here equals Rg. You will see Rg parallel with R input bar, which is which is infinity, right? So it will get you that R input equals Rg. So you can see directly by noticing that the input resistance from here is infinity. So the input resistance from here is Rg parallel with infinity, which is Rg. Or if you are confused, if you can't see this directly, you can just connect a, a, a source Vx that generates a current Ix and you try to find the relation between Vx and Ix to calculate the input resistance. Okay, so the input resistance here, we calculated it using different ways, two different ways, and it will be Rg. Now let's calculate the gain. Let's talk about the gain. V out over V sig. So what we can do here is, from this part of the circuit, you notice that we can get a relation between Vg, the voltage of the gate, between the gate and the ground. We can get a relation between Vg and V signal, right? We can say that Vg over V signal equals what? It's a very simple voltage divider. Vg over V signal equals the whatever input resistance that you see here, whatever input resistance that you see here over the sum, voltage divider, right? So Vg, the voltage between this point and the ground, equals V signal multiplied by whatever input resistance that you will see here, the input resistance that we already calculated, divided over the sum of the input resistance at R signal. So Vg over V signal equals the input resistance over the input resistance plus R signal. We already calculated the input resistance to be Rg, so it will be Rg over Rg plus R. Signal. This is Vg over V signal. From the other part of the circuit, we can also find the relation between V output, which is the voltage between this point and the ground, and between Vg, which is again the voltage between this point and the ground. So V out is the voltage here, while 
Vg is the voltage between this point and the ground, right? So, so this is again a voltage divider. This is again a voltage divider. The voltage here is part of the bigger voltage Vg. The voltage here V out is a part, is a division of the bigger voltage Vg. How much is the division? It's a voltage divider. The ratio between the voltage here and the voltage here is the ratio between the resistance here, the whole thing here, and the total resistance. The resistance here is R O bar with R L, right? So let's write it. V out over V G is the ratio between the resistance here, which is R O bar with R L, divided over the total resistance in this branch, which is this resistor plus this combination, 1 over Gm plus the combination of R O parallel with R L. So this is V out over Vg. Now if you multiply these two gains, V out over Vg times Vg over P signal, it will give you V out over P signal. And the expression will be the multiplication of these two expressions, R O parallel with R L divided by 1 over G L plus R O parallel with R L. Usually R O is very large, so whether to include R O or not to include R O, eventually it will be the almost the same game as a, uh, the same game as a number, as a number, it will be almost the same game. Because R O usually it's very, very large, much larger than the load. So R over with R L is the same approximately as R L. So whether you include R O or you don't include R O as a number, as a number, uh, then uh, that, that will give you the same, the same uh, gain. Multiply by, multiply by the other part of the game, which is R G over R G plus R C. So this is now the game between the output and the uh, V signal. Okay, so this is the gain of the common drain amplifier circuit uh, in front of us. Okay, and as you see, both paths are less than one. Right here, we are dividing something over the same thing plus one over GM. Here, we are dividing RG over RG plus something. So this is less than one, this is less than one. So the voltage gain here, it's less than one. It's less than one, okay? That's why this common drain amplifier, its voltage gain is very small. You cannot use it as a voltage amplifier, okay? You cannot use it as a voltage amplifier. However, it has some other applications based on its input resistance and output resistance, okay? We will see after we calculate the output resistance, it has some other applications and hence it can be used as one stage of a bigger amplifier, you cannot use it by itself as a voltage amplifier because it will not give you any gain. But you can use it as one stage inside the multi-stage amplifier. It will provide you maybe with high uh, input resistance, low output uh, resistance, and so on. So you can benefit from it in other things other than the voltage gain. Now let's look at the Let's look at the output uh, uh, resistance. The output resistance, we are required to calculate the output resistance looking at this point, directly before R8. So, we need to calculate the output resistance looking directly before R8. So, we have to forget everything. We have to forget everything before this point. Okay? Let's remove, let's remove uh, the calculation of R input. in a nicer way so what you will see you will see first this is your V out you will see first RO and then from this point you will see 1 over GM and then you reach to this point where you have a current source GM VGS coming from the 
ground, which is the drain. So we have a current source. See how I'm plotting the circuit? I'm re-plotting the circuit again in a way that I can analyze, in a way that looks uh, easy to me, right? So I'm going step by step. So I started with RO. RO is between this point and ground. And then from this point at the top, I went to 1 over GM. And then from this point, I have a current source coming from the ground. And the current is going to this node. It's called GMPGS. And this node is the gate, actually. Okay. And the ground is the drain. The source is this point. This is the source of the transistor. And then from this point also, I have I have two one resistor here RG and then one resistor on source. When I calculate R out, when I calculate the thermal equivalent resistance, I deactivate any independent source. So this independent source will be deactivated. It will be short circuit, right? This is what I do when I calculate R thermal. When I calculate R thermal, you have to deactivate any independent source. So this independent source will be deactivated, like voltage source will be short circuit. So from the gate you will see two parallel resistors, RG and R segment, right? So here you will see two parallel resistors, RG parallel with R segment. Now I combine them in one resistor here. And remember that the current here, the current here is always zero. The current of the gate is always zero. So remember that the current of the gate is always zero. Now, what I want is, I want to calculate the output resistance seen from here. Let's make it easier. Let's make it easier. Let's do one more step to make it easy. Why don't we say that R output equals RO parallel with whatever you will see from here. Let's call whatever you will see from here R output bar. We can say now that R output equals RO parallel with whatever you will see after RO, with which uh, we call R output bar. And then now we can forget about RO. We can just remove RO and we focus on calculating R output bar. We need to calculate R output bar, whatever the resistance that you will see after RO. In order to do that, again, the circuit here is not clear. Maybe it's confusing to some. Okay, so what we will do if you have a dependent source, you can connect a voltage source Vx that generates a current Ix. This is a dummy voltage source that generates dummy current Ix. You can call it Vx Ix, Vy Iy, it doesn't matter the name. And then you say that R output bar equals what? Equals Vx and I over Ix. Vx divided by Ix. Right? So R output bar equals. Let's just put it here to avoid confusion before GM. R above bar equals Vx divided by Ix. And now we need to get a relation between Vx and Ix. Let's focus a little bit. The current going to the gate equals zero. The current of the gate coming from Rs and R, uh, uh, G, R signal and Rg, okay? The current going to the gate is zero which means that the drop across this resistance is zero. If the drop across this resistance is zero and this resistance is connected to ground here, this means that the voltage here, the voltage here is zero volt, right? The voltage of the gate will be zero volt. Which means also that this current source, GM VGS, VGS is the difference between the gate and the source. The gate now is zero, so this current source VGS, it will be negative VS, right? VGS is VG minus VS. VG now, the voltage of the gate now is zero. So VGS will be negative VS. VGS will be negative VS, right? So we can write this current source as negative GM VS, where VS is the voltage here. You can also make it positive and change the direction if you want. You can leave it like this if you want. But if you are confused or you, you want to make it easy to yourself, you can change the direction 
and the sign. So you can say it's a current source up with the value negative GMV is equal to VS, or it's a current source going down with a value positive GMVS. It's up to you. You can do both. You can work with both. So here we change the direction and we change the sign. So either you say it's a current source going up with a value negative GMVS or going down with a value GMVS. Right? So now, let's try to get a relation. Ix is the same as this current. Why? Because the current here is zero. So the current Ix will be the same. The same as this current, GMVS. Right? The current here, Ix going out of this source is the same as this current. Why? Because the current in the gate is zero. The current in the gate is zero. So the current Ix is the same as this current, GMVS. What about Vx? Vx, the voltage Vx is the same as the voltage of the source. Right? Because this source, Vx, is connected to the ground here. So the voltage here is Vx, which is the same as the voltage of the source. So Vx is the same as Vs. Now if we divide Vx over Ix, Vx over Ix, it will be Vs over Gm Vs. Vs will cancel with Vs, and this will give you 1 over Gm. So R of R will be 1 over Gm. And now we can say that R output, we can say that R output will be will be RO parallel with 1 over GM. So R output will be RO parallel with R output bar, which we calculate to be 1 over GM. So that's how we calculate our input, the gain R output of our common drain amplifier. Notice that here, in this example, the dependent source was not zero, similar to all previous exams. I kept telling you that uh, be careful, but it, and go slowly because in some cases the current source will not be removed. And this is one of the cases: the current source it didn't become zero. Actually, it stayed. It has a value, the dependent current source. So don't uh, don't. Go so quickly, and every problem you see, you remove the current source, you say that the current source will be open circuit, it will be zero. Uh, no, in some cases, it will not be zero. In some cases, you have to do the analysis with that current source. So you have to be careful. Okay? Now, after solving so many problems about the different amplifier families, we have uh, like a table in the slides, you will find a table that summarizes that summarizes some of the properties of the different amplifier families. I'm going to show you this table. So in this table, it compares the different amplifier families. We have common source, common gate, and common drain. And by the way, the common source also, the common source, it has a common source without uh, resistance in the source, and the common source with a resistance in the source. So you will find in the common source, you will find two types of common source amplifiers. Common source with, without a resistance, RS, and the common source with a resistance, RS. And we'll talk about this, that the resistance, RS, it reduces the gain. If you add a resistance in the common source, in the common source, if you add a resistance to the source, the gain is going to be reduced. However, this resistance, it has benefits, like as we described in the biasing techniques of the, uh, of the amplifiers, adding a resistance to the source stabilizes the amplifier, stabilizes the biasing point, right? So if the characteristics of the device change, the biasing point is not going to change very much. So adding RS stabilizes the biasing point. It has also some other benefits to the, uh, to the biasing point, to the structure of the amplifier. However, it affects the, the gain. The gain is going to be reduced. This is the effect of adding RS to the source in the common source family. Now, when we compare the three families, in general, you will find that from the phase perspective, the common source gives you a negative sign in the gain. Always it has a negative sign in the gain. That's why the gain or the phase shift is 180 degrees, while the other two families, zero. 
the voltage gain of the common source is the highest. So in the common source, you get the highest voltage gain. The common gain, sometimes you get high, sometimes you get moderate voltage gain, depending on the resistors for the, for the common gain, depending on the resistors that you have. So sometimes, this is a common drain. Sometimes you get high, sometimes you get a moderate or medium voltage gain. But the highest voltage gain comes from the common source. That's why if you want to design a multi-stage amplifier, you have to use one of the stages or two or three of the stages to be common source in order to get a bulky gain, like a high voltage gain. For the common drain, as we have seen in this example, in the last example, the gain was less than one, right? You are multiplying something less than one by something less than one, so expect that the voltage gain will be less than one. The input resistance for the common gate in general, it's low for the common source, high for the common drain, high, and this is an advantage of the common drain is that the input resistance is high, and this is usually prefer that in the uh, in the in the uh, voltage amplifiers. And the output resistance for the common drain is low. Here, the output resistance is high. Here, is high. So from the input and the output resistance, this is the worst one. Why? Because the input resistance we want it always to be high. This gives you an input resistance low. The output resistance, we always want it to be low, right? It's high here, so this is the worst one. We want it like this only in current buffers. If you are going to use the common gate as a current buffer, then this is suitable for a current buffer. Uh, a buffer that transfers the current at low input resistance and high output resistance. But for voltage buffer, this is not suitable. This is not good, okay? Here, this is the best stage the common drain can use uh, the best at the input stage and the output stage. The common source, it has high and high. Of course, high here is good, but high here is not, uh, uh, is not that good. Okay, so this is a brief uh, comparison uh, about the different amplifier families. Okay, and also you will find in the textbook, you will find just like half a page or, or so to talk about uh, the differences and the, and the comparison between the different amplifier families. Uh, we'll stop here in this video and we'll see you in the next video, inshallah.